Jason X is the 10th installment in the Friday 13th franchise came out in 2001 and this is the best film in the series. Yes, I'm saying that. If you love part 6, Jason Lives, you're going to love this one. It is more of the goofy fun and dumb fun of that movie. Now, I will admit, this is not everyone's cup of tea. If you hate this movie, I get it. If you love this movie, I get it. I think this is, I feel like the only movie in this franchise that's either you love or hate. Because there are some dumb shit in, in this film and I love every second. Okay, maybe not every second of it. That's hyperbole. That's, I'm, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but this is a fantastic movie. So, the film only suffered a couple of seconds of cuts and alterations to earn it already, making it the least censored entry in the entire Friday 13th series. I find that to be a bit shocking. I don't think that this film needed an R rating. It, it didn't feel gory. And I'll honestly, with Jason going to space, the whole space part feels like a TV movie thing. Like, it feels like something being shot in Vancouver for something very cheap. Maybe that's just me. This is the first film to rely on digital effects for death and gore. So, there are some, I think, some, is it most? Shadow and there are some deaths that it's digital effects and this is like early 2000s effects so it's very new it's very amateurish you know it's not great but the one i guess is this even a digital death of the body bag because it's vr they have vr in this movie by the way they have like a vr body bag they recreate the whole body bag thing is That, does that count or is that real? I think that's real. The ending where the Spartan guy from 300, you know, this is madness. Destiny. This is madness. He comes to save the day and he sacrifices society. I guess that's, yeah, that counts. I'm gonna count. Oh, this is funny. While this film was a critical and financial failure in its initial release in theaters, it made more than triple the cost of production and DVD and post theater sales. Statistically, it is one of the most successful Friday 13 films in the series. Yes. Yes, it is. You know why? Because people realize that they should be, you know, should not be taking this film seriously and should just, should just take it at face value of how dumb and cheesy it is, honestly. Screenwriter Todd Farmer based much of the film on the Alien movie, 19 79 even naming one of the characters whom he also played dallas after ridley scott uh, on really oh ridley scott tom garit's character in ridley scott's film so yeah it's clear you know it's jason in space it's fun but it is you know since he's space the lighting again i don't think the lighting is quite as good it is in it it feels very tv movie-esque honestly when i'm it's not a great looking film i will admit it's not really that good to look at because of the space and lights and everything but it's still fantastic one of the best things which went over everyone to the concept of jason in space was the idea of the crew seeing Seemingly killing Jason halfway through the movie, only for him to be recreated into something even scarier via futuristic technology. The mechanism of this change ended up being nanotechnology. Yes, Uber Jason. When that android and this android character is just gold, honestly. She's a badass. She kills Jason, blows him to pieces, and the nanotech starts healing him, recreating him, his cells and everything, and comes out as Uber Jason. It looks ridiculous and awesome at the same time. Clearly, if you can tell, I love this movie. This is the best film. I'm gonna title this, this video the best film in the franchise or series. Nearly every single actor in this film is Canadian. All uh, locals hired from Toronto because it was filmed much cheaper for the production to hire local actors in an area rather than flying over American actors to Canada. It really, mo like, the only reason I know this is the CW Arrowverse shows or CWverse shows that I watch. It's filmed at, in Vancouver. It's a bit ch more cheaper there. If there is a cheaper place other than your own money, then let me know in the comments. But from what I know, Canada is more specifically Vancouver. It's much more cheaper over there to shoot, even now. The film takes place in 2010, then in the future, 2455. So we're dropped 400 years in the future. So 2010, oh, wait, when was the last movie? Early 2000s? Yeah, it makes sense. By the way, in the 2010 part, fucking David Cronenberg just shows up, yo. He's just in the fucking movie randomly. It looks like, yo, it's David Cronenberg. What the fuck? He's randomly in this movie. That was awesome as well. Several of the characters in the films are named after screenwriter Tom Farmer's online friends 
in a PC game EverQuest. Jesus Christ, I feel like this screenwriter Tom Farmer, a 13 year old. Honestly, he could be. He has a minor 13 year old. When he wrote this screenplay, he was like, I'm gonna go back being 13 and write whatever I want. He could possibly be a 13 year old because the movie is like a, it's written like a goddamn 13 year old. The film had a complete shooting production in 2000, but due to unspecified issues with, uh, with New Line, it was not widely released into theaters in 2002, but it was released in 2001, right? Like, as is labeled, it's 2001, but worldwide, like, I guess internationally in 2002, this did happen around that, you know, 9 11 times. So maybe they just wanted that to, you know, let that air out before releasing it. I mean, that's the only assumption, right? Because 2001 was not a great year, specifically in September. So I, I, that's the only thing I can think of. So the character, the main girl, or Rowan, played by Lexa, who's on Arrow as Talia Al Ghul. I'm gonna mention her as Talia Al Ghul because that's where I know her, but Talia Al Ghul, she's like the final girl and she's, I guess, a badass. She is, right? She's the one that has one mission only killing Jason because David Cronenberg in the beginning of the movie was like, we want to use him for assets and scientific purposes, but she's like, no, we need to kill this madman, this supernatural being. And you know, she turned out to be right. And so she's somewhat of a badass in, in this movie where she just has this mission of killing Jason. So I like the quote a bit. This film is included in Roger Elbert's most hated list. <laughs> I said earlier, I can see why people hate this movie. It's not a good movie. I've, again, not a good movie, but I love how bad it is. Just how awful this movie is to me. So yeah, I, I get why people hate this movie. And it's mainly because I did see this movie on TV growing up. Like I remember AMC around Halloween time airing this and just random like sci-fi channels. Uh, the the sci-fi channel and like other channels airing this shit. And it's kind of like, I kept watching this for, for days. Like this is probably my, Jason X is like my most watched Friday the 13th movie. This is my like fifth time watching it or something like that and it's still cracks of the hell up it's still an awful amazing movie and last one i guess it'll be about david cornerberg his cameo was done as a favor to his former protege jim isaac a director of jason x for loaning his canadian based production crew to him in exchange he wanted to get killed on screen ah okay that's where he comes in he just wanted to be in this movie just to get killed off that's interesting during a q a screenwriter tom farmer stated that there were probably about twenty thousand people aboard on the uh, solar space station when it crashing into each other and destroyed it so i guess he's assuming alluding to the space station that crashed due to one of the, the girls she freaked out and goes in it, it explodes so uh, that's a lot of people again digital effects again one of those digital effects skills oh and i guess the guy from 300 uh brodsky is a second character to kill jason the first being tommy so yeah i guess again like tina doesn't count and the sewer doesn't count an actual human being tommy has defeated jason and six and jason x brodsky 300 guy this is madness uh kill is a second person to kill jason and the last one i guess i'll you know mention it. in 2010 the mythbusters actually tested out jason x's liquid nitrogen head smash kill turns out it wasn't really reliable or it doesn't quite pass the smell test see so yeah, one of the best kills in the series where uh, jason wakes up from frozen for 400 years talia al ghul and he says he's killed this girl who's working on puts her head in nitrogen and smashes on the table and just ice and nitrogen and blood all over that was awesome so how am i gonna like recap this how am i gonna talk about the plot of jason x so we start with the year 2010 i guess where david cronenberg is there he gets killed by jason and his goonies tala decides to freeze jason but stabs her this thing or whatever and she freezes not to death but freezes with jason for over 400 years one thing that is interesting is that earth is fucked up 400 years later earth is just like a wasteland unbreathable and unseeable and so when this crew from space decides to come you know find these people a guy gets his hand chopped off and when they go back to the ship and bring jason and tala go back he like has a hand without an arm and everything that was funny to see and then we meet our characters man we meet bad teacher we meet brokey we meet the horny couple we meet the android android creator oh my man there's just there's the bad girl who likes to seduce the teacher there's that one scene you know a student wants to get an a and she decides to seduce the teacher and this teacher loves being a punished session like sex or whatever and that was hilarious i was like what the fuck am i watching this is amazing how can you not laugh at this how about it and then jason one thing i do like about the very few practical effects of jason laying there and the girl working on her lifts up the mask and it's all gooey that was awesome to see her like doing cutting off his head that was awesome to see as well and then we get that nitrogen ice kill wow, that was awesome one thing i, I could have sworn there were, like a lot more kids on the ship maybe that's just me but i could have sworn like there were like a lot of like kids i don't know maybe that's just me maybe that is just me but i i swear there i don't know I'm, maybe this is the big ass solar ship that saw like 20 people dies but one 
one by one, each character goes away. There's even this romantic thing, or not romantic thing, but this love thing between this android and the creator. And they like come to love each other or some shit. It's dumb. It is not, it's not a great, all right. Is there, I'm, I keep thinking of like a basketball scene, but that's not Jason X. That's fucking Alien 4, like Alien Resurrection thing. There's like a basketball scene, but it's not. That's how similar this movie is to like the other like sci-fi space like movies. It's just, it's lit horribly, but feels like a space movie. I don't know. It's fucking weird. But yeah, and then we get to a point to where Jason kills his VR. So this is VR, part, right? Where Jason kills these guy who's playing VR. These guys both die in VR. And it's like, oh man, fuck you guy. Jason kills them in real life. They didn't need to be there, but. Oh yeah, I completely forgot. There's like an army or military team. A task force on the ship. But the Brosky's character, he's like. So the scientist teacher or whatever, he wants to save Jason for scientific purposes. But then, you know, Brosky's like, nah, we gonna kill this guy. He is killing crewmates. He is an imposter. He needs to die. And so, you know, one by one, these army dudes or whatever, they start dying. There's that scene of the, the spinning army guy just rolling. And then there's even a fake out death where you think Jason kills Brodsky. He gets stabbed in his stomach or whatever. We meet him later. He's fine. Again, while that's happening, the useless characters, even Tyler they go there. They're just kind of there waiting to be killed. There's even one point where the teacher is like, it's okay. He just wants his whatever back. I forgot. And he gets killed off because he's an idiot. And then fucking Brodsky comes back. He gets the nanotech inside of him. He gets back up. He's worked up. Oh shit, is there? I feel like I'm missing something. Whatever. And then the Andro chick, she comes out with fucking like a bad suit. Basically a dominatrix suit with a bunch of guns. Starts shooting Jason. Gets blown the fuck up. Rips one of his arms, one of his legs, his whole face. Now they think they've won. As I pre like stated in one of the one of these trivia facts, they want to turn Jason into Uber halfway. But this is like last 20 minutes, it feels like. Because they kind of blew their load with the whole like digital effect. Right, we see shots of like outside of space and like fake earth. And so clearly, actually, they didn't mention the budget. I'm assuming the budget is probably the highest budget movie. I could be wrong there, but they had to do early bad 2000s digital effects and they probably spent all the money uh, money on that because the guns look, looks like like doom guns from the game doom or like like nerf guns honestly it, they don't look too great but they had you know they blew their load and so this is why jason uber jason his mask is the way it is their eyes only one part of his arm is uber and one part of his leg is uber and the rest of it is still black so kind of blew their load jason punches the androids her head come off she's still like a you know she's an android i, I think broski gets so-called kills again he, he like they like fake out kill him once or twice and it comes back in the end but he's gone for a while and then it's up to well one of the girls decides to get that hell out because she's freaking out decides to kill twenty thousand people get on that and then we get to you know that one part the one part we're looking, waiting for oh right, hold on sorry about that i'm forgetting one point they recreated the whole part seven new blood sleeping back scene or i'm gonna like a, I'm, i think i'm gonna insert this scene where if these two girls talking about you want to have sex or something i'm butchering the saying here but that was hilarious and he decides to just gets back slams them in vr and granted it's in vr but it's still a cool little of not a reference and it's, it's you know them buying time so they can escape from the ship we get to the best part brodsky versus jason and this start facing off and it cuts away god damn it but yeah they cut away to you know Tala and those who freaking the fuck out the android head is still fucking like why is it still talking don't know why and then we cut back to you know broski versus jason they start fighting now okay yeah so he does get so-called fake die the second time jason gets him again then jason gets thrown out into space they actually find a way to throw him out into space i think one of the girls have to die because he's outside because of gravity he goes out there and then through will he comes like back like, they see a window he's slowly coming back and then guess who comes to save the day and be the ultimate sacrifice yeah, boy, Brodsky. Brodsky. And it does the 300, like, madness kick, it feels like. Bam. Gets Jason, and him and Jason sort of comes like a meteoroid. Yeah, and they go, they go on to Earth, and that's where the ending is, where Jason Mass lands on Lake on Earth 2, as I'm reading this trivia, Earth 2. And apparently, this ending was left open for a possible sequel. The critical financial failure film, however, along with upcoming Freighters with Jason, led to any possibility of sequel being abandoned. It's highly likely that he died for good anyway, although this question would not will likely never be answered because he, like, disintegrated. Yeah, there's no way he died. I know they wanted to bring this version of Jason X back, but both him, 300 guy, Madness guy, and Jason disintegrated. Unless they found some BS way to be like his essence or some shit. I don't know. I'm making shit up. Yeah, but in terms of movie, this is the last one in the original storyline, so he's very likely dead and overall jason x is great this is a awful movie and i love how awful and horrible again as i kind of repeated myself as i said earlier and kind of in the middle of the movie video i get it if you completely hate this movie i get a hundred percent and i also get it a hundred percent 
as to why you love this movie as well it's that bad i don't think i've seen anyone in the middle on this movie unless i just haven't been talking to a lot of people who like watch horror movies but yeah i feel like most people are either love or hate this movie you have a love or hate relationship with this movie kind of nothing in the middle to talk about it's not a good movie but i love it and it's great next is obviously the biggest horror crossover ever the one that every horror fan has been waiting for freddy versus jason 